Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question was, Frederick, what does it mean to maintain code? So let's get into it. Well, this is a fairly straightforward question and it's something that you may have heard me say quite a few times and probably heard a few other developers say as well. So maintaining code, like what does that even mean? Like it doesn't code just stay the same. I mean, you write it once and then you kind of, I mean, it's a digital thing. You don't really have to think about it all that much. And this is absolutely true. If you write a program of any kind and you never change it, then it just stays the way it is and there's no maintenance involved. You don't have to like switch out parts just to make things, to kind of make them still work right. But that is not how IT works. It's not how software development works just overall. Usually what happens is that things keep on changing. You see, when you work for a software company of some sort of like of some size, usually what's going to happen is that you're going to deliver some project to a customer or to your project, basically to the company itself. You have some product with a set of features that is making your company money, yeah. but that's not where it stays. Usually what the way it goes is that you have new feature requirements and you have requests for updates to existing feature requirements. You have A-B tests where people want to kind of try out, okay, we have this feature and our customers like that, but we want to check if there's a better way to increase some type of metric. It can be revenue, which is the most common one. You want to make more money, right? And that basically brings you to a situation where, okay, so now you have to change that feature. And the problem with changing features, and this is the underlying hardest, most difficult, this is where all the problems come from, guys. This is the, the main reason why software development is so hard. Because when you want to change something, you basically need to be able to do that without breaking something else, or at the very least to make sure that when you make a change, the thing that you just changed is working in the intended fashion. And this is where testing comes in. This is the reason why we have testing in the first place. The only reason pretty much we have testing is because if you change a line of code, it doesn't matter how small that change is, there's always a chance that you broke something. And because that chance is so high and it exists in any change you want to make, we need to write tests or use other tools in order to assert that these things, like things are still working in the intended fashion. So you may have heard of some of these techniques that we use in order to test code, which is test-driven development or TDD, behavioral driven development, BDD, and then we have manual testing, like people like the, because that's actually a full-time job as well. You can be a tester, a software tester, and that means that your entire job is to sit and manually test if something is actually working in the intended fashion. And all of this is considered cost that we pay in order to make sure that our application continues working in the intended fashion. And because it's not considered money making work, because you know, shipping a new feature or delivering a feature that increases revenue, stream, revenue somehow, that is something that is making money for the company. But testing code and making sure that it stays testable and writing it in a good fashion so that it keeps on being testable. It's not something we consider to be directly money producing. It can only save us time and energy and effort and make sure that we maintain our developer velocity. And that's why we think about it as maintenance. And the this is where these practices around good software architecture and development and all of this good stuff kind of comes in where you have the discussion about clean code versus legacy code and all of this sort of stuff because basically all that comes down to is one to make things more comprehensible but that ultimately is for the same reason as all the other stuff which is the better your code is the better the more well structured it is the more maintainable it becomes because the the uglier the code is, as you can imagine, the harder it is to test it, the harder, it, the longer it takes for you to add features and things of this nature. So what I want you to take away from this is basically that when we talk about code being maintainable, all we're basically saying is that 
our code needs to be structured in a good fashion so that we can keep on testing it so that we can update features and we can add features without causing regression bugs or causing issues for existing features because it's not going to work if every time you try I mean and this is actually a very hard harsh truth that quite a lot of projects are so poorly structured that changing anything will take and then it will take like several days to just verify that you didn't break something or regression test to make sure that all the existing features are still working because unfortunately that's the that's the cost that you have to pay to change something in software so maintainable code just basically means that the code is well structured enough and has enough testing and testing processes to guarantee or almost guarantee that everything keeps on working even if a major change change has been introduced to the project have a great day